All right, here we go. Um, so now remember when I said that the, uh, the simple answer to what happened to us was that, you know, basically we, uh, our, our Y DNA E1B when they left and all these other groups came in, right? Okay, we'll frame that. Pause, pause it and frame that. All right, this is the most high in Leviticus 26 and 33. He says in first person, this is the most high talking and I will scatter you among the heathen and will draw out a sword after you and your land shall be desolate and your cities waste. So in lay terms, the Most High is telling you exactly what was going to happen, that there was going to be not a soul left in the land of Israel in Jerusalem. And how do I know that? Well, let's look up, let's look up, the, let's, let's bring up desolate and see what desolate means. Desolate, uh, of a place deserted of people and in a state of bleak and dismal emptiness. Go down a little bit as a verb, desolate, to make a place bleakly and depressingly empty or bare. And there it is there. Now, how was this accomplished? Remember I said there were several things as to how this was accomplished in terms of the, there was a mass exodus and a, a, a mass migration, you know, if you will, of our people in the E1B1A out of Israel. Well, let's, let's deal with the first incident that happened, um, that, 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 that partly achieved that. And that would be the, the Assyrian deportation of about 720, 722, uh, BC. Remember, I touched on how King Shalmaneser he replaced a lot of our people with those Ethiopians. We were deported. That's when that's when the the, the ten tribes were deported out of Israel. All right, and what's not talked about also is when the Assyrians came in, they actually replaced Hebrew with Aramaic. Right? Because so, so when I did the knowledge, if you remember, when I did the knowledge on my people, the Yoruba Jews who said, okay, they were from Morocco. And um, when they got to Yoruba and said, that, hey, we are Benai Ephraim. And linguistically, they spoke uh, some Aramaic and some Moroccan. And, I, and it, it, threw, it threw me off at first. I'm like, well, why were they speaking, you know, why, why would they be speaking Aramaic? Wouldn't it be Hebrew? And, and, and so when I, when I did, and I dug a little deeper and I found out, okay, the Assyrians replaced Hebrew with Aramaic. So then it definitely lined up and made sense that when they got to, when they fled Morocco into, uh, Yoruba in West Africa, and they were speaking, uh, some Aramaic, that then it definitely lined up. So let's go back. The Assyrian deportation, that was the first, um, major event. Uh, that put a big dent in our E1, B1, A and all of our subgroups out of Israel. Okay. They, 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 they weren't lost. They weren't lost. They, they were, they were literally, um, deported, you know, kind of like, you know, um, when the, um, uh, immigration comes and, 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 you know, deports the, um, uh, you know, the Mexican brothers and stuff back to uh, Mexico or whatever. But, the, but the thing is, you know, uh, and, and this is my personal opinion, you know, the Assyrians had no right come and deport nothing. Nobody asked them to come to Israel, you know. Um, but anyway, not to not to go on a tangent, that was the first major event, the Assyrian deportation. So let's 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 go a little bit into that. Read a little bit on that and for, before we continue on with the uh with the segment. Yep. The Assyrian deportation. You know, for all intents and purposes, this was the original trail of tears, man. You know, and, um, you know, as I move forward, you'll see this wasn't like this didn't happen in just a day or a couple of days or a couple of months or a year. Even, you know, this is this was a long process, you know, you know, over 20 years. But see, this is what happened when the most high withdrew his protection from us, man. All hell broke loose. It was open season on us, man. And I mean, and, and these savages came up in there and, and, and it wasn't like we didn't fight back. Don't please don't get it twisted. You know, we wouldn't, we wouldn't know no singing, holding hands and singing kumbaya. No, nah, we had our soul. We was doing our thing. You know, we, we definitely fought back as hard as we could. Many of us, you know, perished and died. You know, so, you know, we, we fought, man. But that, that Assyrian, uh, deportation, that, um, that took a huge, huge chunk 
uh, out of our migration up out of uh, our homeland, man. And if, you know, and um, if you look at that picture, man, I mean, that's 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 a sad uh, picture. You know, um, you know, you you being deported from your homeland. Wait a minute, how how you gonna deport somebody from their own land, man? Like where they where, where did they do that at, man? You know, but 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 again, you know, to keep it in perspective, you know, the Most High He told us, you know, we wanted to be stiff necked and we wanted to be, complain and we didn't want to keep His law, statutes, and commandments. And when He withdrew His protection, man, oh man, it was open season. And I'm going to be honest with you, it's been on ever since. It's been on ever since. So let's go on to the next uh, slide where you know, talk about the Caesarean uh, deportation slash captivity for a little bit before we move forward and talk about the next event that pretty much did us in and, and did away with the E1B1A out of Israel. All right, the Assyrian captivity of Israel, or I like to refer to it as the Assyrian deportation of Israel. It said the northern kingdom of Israel was, was conquered by the Neo-Assyrian monarchs Tiglath-Pileser III and Shalmaneser uh, V, the later Assyrian ruler Sargon II and his son and successor Shanasherib were responsible for finishing the 20-year demise of Israel's northern ten tribe kingdom, although they did not overtake the southern kingdom. Jerusalem was besieged, but not taken. The tribes exiled by Assyria later became known as the ten lost tribes. Um, but make no mistake, the process was definitely underway um, for the E1B1A becoming a, not even a distinct memory of their own homeland of Israel. I mean, you know, trust me, I do understand and get it. And I know that we were totally responsible for where we are as a people and as a nation. You know, but for me, you know, all things, you know, considered, it's still pretty, uh, you know, pretty sad and somber, you know, in my spirit, you know, knowing the history of my people, man, and how we were, uh, you know, basically kicked off off of our, our own land and you know basically we were the original Native Americans you know you get technical and so yeah that's that's kind of sombering man you know even as I as I you know I've researched this I'm going over it and I'm narrating and everything like that I'm bringing the knowledge to, to all of you it's still pretty sombering to know um, you know what we went through as a people and I mean throughout history and I mean what we're still going through today I mean it's just yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty sombering um, but moving right along um, now this Assyrian cuneiform, now this is very important. There's a lot of key things in this. All right, the Assyrian cuneiform states that 27,290 captives were taken from Syria, the capital of the northern kingdom of Israel by the hand of Sargon II. Now that is significant. Why is that significant? Because when that happened, what's not listed here is when those 27,000 captives were taken from Samaria, Okay, the, the Ethiopians were brought in and replaced them there. Okay, and me and my uh, my right hand man, uh, Tony Judah, was building on this a couple Sabbaths ago, right? When 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 Christ met the lady at the well, you know, we we, we built on that and it, it, was, it was real tight, you know. But that's why they think that they're us. Okay, they were placed uh, there by King Solomon, but they're not they're not us. Okay, that that's that's key right there. All right, and Christ told the lady as, as as much, pretty much like you don't even know who you are, you know you don't you know you you you're not you know you're not uh, this isn't your land. Like you know he was telling her, like letting her know, like uh, no you're mistaken, like this is not your your land. This is not the land of your your forefathers. Well, anyway, not to go on a tangent, but that's that's key. That's important. All right, and he you know he says this Sargon records of course his first campaign. Yada yada yada. He told he tells you right here in the first reign the people of Samaria to the number of twenty seven thousand. So he actually tells you how many people were uh, carried away. All right, and uh, let's scroll down. He said the description of the final defeat of the northern kingdom of Israel above appears to be a minor event in Sargon's legacy. He said, Some historians attribute the ease of Israel's defeat 
to the previous two decades of invasions, defeats, and deportations. Man, we were tired of scrapping with these fools, man. This has been going on, and uh, I mean, we were just fighting, and, and it says right here, like I said, it was a process. Over 20 years, man, of invasions, of them messing with us, fighting them, you know, defeats, you know, them, them rounding us up and getting us up out of there. I mean, it was just, we, man, you know, the most high said our foot would not have rest, man. And I, I tell you, like I said, it's been on ever since, man. I mean, it really has. It really has that that that's key right there because that, that that tells you that we have been fighting with them with the, with these Assyrians for a long time, and um, not to get too uh, too far ahead, but um, Flavius Josephus he 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 accounts for I mean all of that he has like literally a um, a timeline of of things that happened with with our people in the in the the destruction of Jerusalem and and what happened with the Romans and, and you know we'll get into that I guess I don't want to get too far ahead but um that's key that tells you right there man we've been we were fighting with them for a long time and maybe, maybe, maybe i'm sure i'm sure we were tired man you know we're trying to take care of our women and our children and you know fighting fighting these guys off man and you know you're trying to you know enslave us or kill us or kill our women and children whatever the case may be and uh it, it was a very long process of going through that back and forth i, I can't even imagine what they we're going through man like like really I mean like like they they weren't messing with anyone but here we are fighting off these Assyrians fighting for our, our lives fighting for our homeland and as you can see slowly but surely man it was slipping away slowly but surely man we were our, our, our wide DNA of E1B1A was walking out of history literally slowly but surely this is what you're listening to right now this is what we're this is what I'm bringing forth all right so let, 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 me, let me continue. Let me read on. Some estimates assume a, cap, a captivity numbering in the hundreds of thousands, minus those who died in defense of the kingdom, and minus those who fled. That's key too. Those who fled voluntarily before and during the invasions. That's key because a lot of us did flee. We fled into West Africa. I'll get more into that in the... Uh, in the next segment when I deal with the Roman destruction. Uh, but lastly, however, it has also been suggested that the numbers of deported by the Syrians were rather limited and the bulk of the population remained in situ. There is also evidence that significant numbers fled south to the kingdom of Judah. And that's key because that would explain uh, how some tribes from the north or like like for for, for example uh, why some from Ephraim actually got kind of caught up uh, with Judah um, you know and, and that's why we're kind of mixed up today even in America you know you have some from the tribe of Judah from the from the tribe of Ephraim um, with the Ebos over there and um, you know they're from Gad so that that would actually explain uh, the mixture so um, with with some from the north fleeing south that definitely uh, that definitely is key and I want to kind of you know, speak on that real quick. It's a trip how everything just kind of lines up, man. You know, but everybody hang on in there. I've covered a lot. We're running up on the, uh, the end part of the presentation. All right, now before I deal with the very last part of the, uh, the Assyrian deportation, I want to refer back to, you know, what the Most High said, you know, in first person, you know, because uh, it's, it's relevant and, uh, you know, it, 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 it ties everything together. All right, Leviticus 26, 32 and 33, he says, And I will bring the land, which is Israel, into desolation. And we already defined what desolation is. That means totally empty, devoid. And your enemies, which will dwell, which dwell therein, shall be astonished at it. And I will scatter you among the heathen and will draw out a sword after you and your land shall be desolate in your city's waste all right and the most high says i am the lord and i change it not and let me tell you when he says something that's exactly what he means man like, i can't even begin to tell you the, the the amount of enemies that have come through israel and tainted their blood with the holy land to the point where you got dna thinking that they're actually uh, Semitic. It's it's just it's crazy, man. It's 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 crazy. But um, 
he said it and he meant it he said I and I will bring the land into desolation and your enemies which dwell therein shall be astonished at it so on to the very last slide before we go and end it, and end it with the uh, Roman destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD and you know as much research as I've done you know all this still just kind of you know boggles my mind man it really does alright moving right along this is the uh, the last slide um, it talks about the return now it says unlike the kingdom of Judah or Yehuda which was able to return from its Babylonian captivity the ten tribes of the northern kingdom never had a foreign edict granting permission to return and rebuild their homeland many centuries later rabbis of the restored kingdom of Judah were still debating the return of the lost ten tribes however Assyria had been conquered by Babylon and Babylon had been conquered by the Medo-Persians <laughs> it's insane man all this conquering and invading and why don't everybody just stay on their own home country turf man and just leave everybody alone you know <laughs> and we're not even having this conversation you know our people who you know our E1B1A is showing up in Israel we're doing our thing and you know <laughs> you know don't mind me I'm just thinking out loud man but um yeah I, I kind of got a problem with that whole 10 lost that lost 10 tribe thing you know tribes ain't lost man like the brother said in the uh in the uh in the uh african limbo video we are not lost we are scattered yep i agree all right moving around we're moving right along to the next segment uh, the roman destruction of jerusalem 70 a.d the event that ended it all okay and once again because it's important the most high had already put it out there uh the total destruction of israel of israel of jerusalem he said it was going to be desolate, okay, and the cities were going to be waste, all right? That, that was prophesied, and he said that in the first person, okay? And then uh, Christ, the Messiah, he prophesied that Jerusalem would be totally destroyed. And as you can see, he says, and Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down and that my brothers and sisters is him prophesying the total destruction Roman destruction of Jerusalem 70 AD again the event that ended it all and quite possibly the saddest day in the history of our people and the history of the E1B1A let's get it yeah the roman destruction of jerusalem 70 a.d when i say that um you know this is quite possibly the saddest day uh in the history of our people in the history of our yd and of e1b1a that's definitely not an understatement um the romans carried out man such i mean i mean destruction cold callous i mean no mercy they listen they killed women children the elderly priests i mean they the body it was so many it was so many bodies that the romans killed they didn't have places to put the bodies man um it was that bad it was that bad it was total decimation and i'm gonna you know uh submit some some slides you know we're gonna kind of talk about it more in depth um, because there was a a a, a quote-unquote Roman Judean by the name of Flavius Josephus who wrote and gave a first-hand account as to what he saw and what happened as a matter of fact he actually has a a, a, a chronology of events uh, with, with, with when, when this took place you know so uh, definitely check out uh, the complete works of Flavius Josephus um, if you have not done so all right um, because like I said he gives uh, you know firsthand uh, knowledge of what he saw and what happened man and it was it was it was I can't even put it into words how awful and how bad it was man I'm serious I'm not even over exaggerating 
um, they 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 did us dirty. They did us really, really dirty. Those Romans, man, they they really did. Um, but this event in human history is what completely altered the tra uh, trajectory and migration of our Y DNA haplogroup group of E one B one A, our blood lineage, and our nationality as Hebrew Israelites. See. Um, we either fled to West Africa, uh, you know, we were, you know, captured uh, and, and sold, you know, as slaves there. You know, we were constantly fighting, running, fighting, trying to avoid capture, trying to avoid being enslaved, you know, by Arabs who, you know, they tried to, you know, come in and swoop in and, and uh, you know, at a, at a bad time. And, and uh, you know, they were capitalists, man. And, and they, they knew that we were cursed and they called us Yehudi. They, they knew that, man. They knew who we were and they, and they know who we are right now. Um, uh, so our DNA only picks up where we ended up, not where we originated in Israel. Because remember, I said this, this event, I mean, literally, it, 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 it put an end to the Jewish state. And that's how they describe it. It, it literally uh, put an end to the Jewish state. Now you might ask, well, so how does that exactly, you know, show that, you know, or how did it get rid of the E1B1A? Well, um, in simple terms, uh, when, the, when, when it was all said and done, there was no one left, literally. There was not one soul left in Israel. Remember, the Most High said it. He was, it was going to be desolate. Right? Think back. It was going to be desolate. And I'm, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm going to provide some, uh, you know, some first-hand accounts from this Flavius Josephus. And, you know, we'll go through that. But I mean, I'm just want to, I just want to kind of set it up. This is the event right here that that, that everything culminated to. I, I can't even, I can't, I'm serious. I can't put into words how bad it was, man. Seriously. I, 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 I definitely highly recommend you, uh, you all, uh, Googling, um, either the destruction, uh, of Jerusalem or the siege of Israel, something like that, or even like the, the complete works of Flavius Josephus, you know, PDF or something. Um, I have his works, uh, you know, and, uh, I tell you, it's it's uh, it's something else, man. It, it's uh, I can't I can't even put it into words, but this is what uh, culminated in the, uh, our E one B one A not pointing uh, to Israel any longer because when it was all said and done, this Roman destruction, seventy A D, those who weren't enslaved were killed. I mean, li there was literally not a soul left and on that note we're going to jump into uh you know some of the slides and and, and talk about it from a first-hand account of Flavius Josephus but um this is this is what took us over the edge man um yeah so we're gonna go on go on to the uh next slide um well you know before I I, I bring up some of the slides uh from uh you know Flavius Josephus in his first-hand account I kind of wanted to touch on some some things that, that that took place, man, during this Roman destruction um, of Jerusalem. Um, there there were, I mean, mass crucifixions of Hebrew Israelites, man. Um, Hebrew Israelites were literally burned alive. I mean, children, women, they 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 barred none. Um, I mean, it, it was almost like they were possessed. I mean, they 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 they, they, they literally a lot of the Hebrew Israelites, uh, mostly women and, and and things. They 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 asked, they begged, they pleaded for mercy. And these Romans, man, they 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 had none. You you got to read that chronology, man, of what they did to our people, man. I'm serious. I I want you all to read that. You know, I'm not going to get into it because I. I you know, we're running up on the end of this presentation. I know I've covered a lot, but um, I just, I just, I wanted to speak on that. I wanted, to, I wanted to tell you some of the atrocities 
of what they did. And that still doesn't uh, really do it justice in, in terms of what they did to our people, man. So I'm, I'm going to be I'm going to be totally real with you. So when the Romans finally got theirs, when the Roman Empire came to an end, I was happy as a mug. They got done dirty, too, by the barbarians. I'm not going to go on a tangent, but they got done dirty, too, because they did our people dirty, man. You know, they really did. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to get off this little soapbox. I'm not going to go on a tangent, but I want to speak on some of the atrocities and what they did to our people, man. I please, I want you all to Google that chronology of Flavius Josephus and destruction of Jerusalem. All right. And we can talk about it on the YouTube page or, or whatever, but please Google that. You know, we can talk about it. But I, I wanted to touch on some of the atrocities and, 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 uh, you know, what they did to our people, man. It was inhumane, man. It was, I, I, I can't even speak to that, man. I mean, I guess they, they were Hitler before Hitler. What they did to us, man. It, it, it was, it was, it was, man. All right, uh, moving moving right along to the to the uh, to the next slide. All right, here's a um, you know I want to give like a brief bio on uh, Flavius Josephus, you know the one who gave the uh, first hand account of the Roman destruction of uh, Jerusalem. Um, and you, know, you all can kind of you know press pause and read it, whatever the case may be. Um, but like I said, I definitely highly recommend um, his book. Uh, the complete works of Flavius Josephus, because if you are serious about researching your history as a Hebrew Israelite, that book is definitely um, a must have. And I highly recommend it to everyone. So get your hands on that or, you know, download it, get the PDF. Matter of fact, the PDF is available, you know, for free. So, you know, um, you don't even have to, to worry about trying to order it off Amazon. You can just, just Google um, complete works of Flavius Josephus. Uh, PDF, and it'll come right up. All right, um, the Wars of the Jews, or the History of the Destruction of Jerusalem, Book Seven. This is actually an uh, an excerpt from uh, the complete works of Flavius Josephus, and and here, you know, it 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 goes into you know how uh, you know containing the interval of about three years and. Uh, from the taking of Jerusalem by Titus to the sedition at Serene and how the entire city of Jerusalem was demolished. And if you go down a little bit, here's where we get the, the first-hand account verification um, that there was no one left in, in Israel. It says, now as soon as the army had no more people to slay or to plunder, because there remain none to be the objects of their of their fury. For they would not have spared any had there remained any other work to be done. Let me say that again. Now as soon as the army had no more people to slay or to plunder, because there remained none to be the objects of their fury. For they would not have spared any had there remained any other work to be done. And that hammers home the point I made about them showing no mercy and um, just just complete and utter destruction and inhumane treatment uh, of our people. So there it is there, first-hand account of why the E-1B-1A it no longer points to Israel. All right, it picks up where we ended up, not where we originated. Because after the Roman destruction of Jerusalem, as you all can see, and the Most High said it, it was desolate. There was not an E one B one A left. It's like we. It's, it's almost like we were, uh, in a sense wiped out of history our dna was wiped out of history right at least from from that from the from the middle east from our uh, our homeland you know so so it's easy to keep us uh or just kind of put us and keep us in west africa because truthfully there's nothing that exists that says that they should um do anything else half the people that that, that in the powers that be they know who we are anyway they know who we are right 
you know, you have to remember, like, we are a small percentage. There's, there's more of our people who don't know or have a clue as to who we are. Vice the Hebrews that do. Look at these mega black churches, man. These mega churches. And I'm not going to call any, call any names, but let's just let's look at that. And you'll see how lost we are. And, and, and unfortunately, um, two-thirds of us are going to die. You know, have already died not knowing you know the truth so you know there it is there I think I got one or two more slides man and we're moving on um, from this segment man and I, and I think I definitely uh, hit the point home you know as far as what happened to us all right so we're moving moving on all right uh, Josephus claims that uh, 1.1 million people were killed during the siege, of which the majority were Jewish, <laughs> really, <laughs> and that 97,000 were captured and enslaved. Um, then it goes on to say, quote, the slaughter, the slaughter within was even more dreadful than the spectacle from without. Men and women, old and young, insurgents and priests, those who fought and those who entreated mercy were honed down in indiscriminate carnage. The number of the slain exceeded that of the slayers. The legionaries had to clamor over heaps of dead to carry on the work of extermination. My God. Wow, man. It says many fled to the areas around the Mediterranean. Titus reportedly refused to accept a wreath of victory, saying that the victory did not come through his own efforts, but that he had merely served as an instrument of God's wrath. You know what? Um, I, I just uh, on to the next slide. Okay, so uh, it says the Roman legions quickly crushed the remaining Jewish resistance. So like I said before, you know, we fought and we fought hard and we fought, you know, valiantly, you know, but um, in the end, it just wasn't enough. You know, we, we clearly we were, you know, overwhelmed. It says part of the remaining Jews escaped through hidden underground tunnels. Wow, okay while others made a final stand in the upper city. This defense hailed the Roman advance as they had to construct siege towers to assail the remaining Jews. The city was completely under Roman control by September 7th, and the Romans continued to pursue those who had fled the city. Wow, talking about adding insult to injury. And I want I want you all to Google the uh, uh, Google Masada. All right, Google that in relation to the Hebrew Israelites and the the uh, the, the Roman uh, destruction. All right, all right. Um, that's going to conclude uh, this segment in terms of uh, you know I, I I definitely have shown and proven you know what happened to the E1B1A. And why it does not point to Israel, like I said I would. And um, that concludes this, this segment.